This is a, uh, an introduction to spectrophotometry where I hope that we will learn uh, some of the fundamentals of uh, Beer's Law. Let's start off by taking a look at a couple samples. Here I have a, uh, a pair of food colorings, one red, one green. Both are in uh, cuvettes. These are standard uh, food colorings that you can find from, uh, uh, from the grocery store. And I've got a uh, red laser pointer. And what I'm interested in is looking at what happens to the laser pointer as we shine the light through the sample. Let's start off with the red one. As we move the sample into the beam of light, we see that the, uh, the light doesn't appear to have any, uh, um, have any change. It's just as bright with or without the sample in the uh, the length of the, or in the path. Compare that to the green. We notice that there is a change, a noticeable change, in the intensity of the light as the red light goes through the green sample. Not all the light is being transmitted, or put another way, it looks as if some of the light is being absorbed. We can also look at how concentration affects the amount of light that is transmitted. Here we have two different samples. They are the same dye, just two different concentrations. And we'll start off with the dark one as we had in the previous, uh, previous section, shining light through it and we see that some of the light is, uh, is absorbed. Now if we use the lower concentration, we see that while some of the light is absorbed, it uh, it is not as much as the uh, uh, as the darker uh, darker sample. So more light is being transmitted with the lower concentration. That suggests that there is a relationship between the amount of light transmitted and the uh, the concentration of the dye. In the last part of this uh, demonstration, I want to take advantage of these cuvettes, which have a uh, nice little feature. One side is thick. There's a, uh, that's around one centimeter thick and then we can rotate on its side and see that it's only about three millimeters thick. What this uh, allows us to do is shine the light through either uh, a large amount of the sample or a small amount of the sample. So let's start off again uh, with going through the three millimeter uh, uh, length of solution. This is the same thing that we've been doing all along and we see a uh, uh, absorption of the of the light. Now when we move to the one millimeter we see that a lot more of the light is uh, is absorbed. From this we can conclude that the path length also has an effect on the amount of light that's going to be absorbed from a uh, sample in spectrophotometry. Let's go ahead and summarize some of the observations that we've made. We saw that the red dye solution transmitted most, if not all, of the red laser light. However, the green dye solution absorbed some of that light. Saying that it absorbed the light is just like saying it did not transmit all of the light. When we had a dilute green solution, of, uh, that one absorbed less light than the concentrated one. And we also observed that the longer path length resulted in more light absorption. We can analyze these uh, observations by saying that the transmittance and the absorbance of light depends on the components in solution. We might also be able to hypothesize that the wavelength of the source light is important. However, since I didn't have a green laser light to test this hypothesis, we can't say too much about that in this video. We also observed that absorbance was decreasing with decreasing concentration, and we can make a claim that absorbance increases with increasing path length. Let's go ahead and try to uh, depict this uh, experiment diagram or schematically. We have a source, a sample, and a detector. The detector in our case was just a piece of white paper and our eye. The source was our LED uh, laser. And the sample is the uh, cuvette. What we're trying to do is uh, measure the amount of light that's coming out, so the intensity of the light coming out of the sample, relative to the intensity of light that's going in, I out divided by I in. We're going to call this 
ratio transmittance. And we're also going to define the absorbance as the negative log of this value. So there's a relationship between transmittance and absorbance. We're going to focus on absorbance because it turns out to be the more useful uh, term. When we added a uh, sample, the uh, red sample did not uh, uh, appear to absorb any, uh, any of the red laser light. We can uh, say from that that the sample transmits light of its own color. And when we moved to the green sample, we saw that uh, the green sample absorbed quite a bit of light and less light was transmitted. Change in the concentration of the sample changed the amount of light that was transmitted. And we were able to change the amount of light that was transmitted by changing the sample path length. Smaller path length led to more light being transmitted or less light being absorbed. All of these phenomena are brought together in what's called the Beers-Lambert law. So if we were to measure the same solution at various dilutions and plot the absorbance that we measured versus concentration, we would get a straight line. That straight line corresponds to this equation, A equals epsilon BC, where A is the absorbance, epsilon is the molar absorptivity, B is the path length, and C is the concentration. The Beers-Lambert plot is a special type of calibration curve. A calibration curve allows us to look at the relationship between absorbance and concentration and is a typical method for uh, analytical chemists to determine the concentration of unknown solutions. We plot a series of, uh, of experimental data as a function of the concentration and then use a best fit line to extract a meaningful equation from that data. We can use the, uh, the best fit of the uh, Beers-Lambert law to, uh, to figure out the concentration of an unknown. Say, for example, an uh, unknown gave a result or an absorbance of 0.12. We could find that on the y-axis and find where the, uh, the best fit line crosses that point. And we would see in this particular hypothetical case that it corresponds to a concentration of about 0.4 molar. So as long as we know the best fit line and we've kept all of our parameters constant, we can use Beers-Lambert law to determine the concentration of the unknown. And that's what uh, is frequently done in a variety of experiments uh, using spectrophotometry. Now let's uh, focus on the, uh, the slope of this line just a little bit more. We notice that uh, if the uh, path length is constant, then the slope of this line is equal to the molar absorptivity. If the slope is large, then that indicates that the molar absorptivity is also large. A large molar absorptivity indicates that a sample has high sensitivity to light at that wavelength. In our example, we saw that green was very sensitive to the red laser light, and so we would predict that it would have a high slope and a high molar absorptivity. Compare this to the red dye which showed little sensitivity to the red light, and therefore it has a very low slope or low molar absorptivity. The molar absorptivity of a dye is dependent on the various wavelengths, and we can see in this figure called a visible spectrum that different food colorings have different uh, intensities at the various wavelengths. The peak intensity is called the lambda max, which is a quantity that helps us identify various dyes or substances that absorb in the visible spectrum. To conclude, uh, after watching this video, there are several objectives, uh, learning objectives that you should have met. You should be able to define the relationship between concentration and absorbance and name that law. You should be able to explain the basic principles of spectrophotometry both verbally and through sketching a diagram like we did earlier on in this video. You should be able to apply Beer's law to determine the concentration of an unknown. You should also be able to distinguish between absorbance and transmittance, knowing what the definitions are of the two and being able to convert mathematically between transmittance and absorbance. You should be able to design a calibration curve, and you should be able to evaluate Beer's law to, uh, uh, to determine the molar absorptivity.